after 45 years of marriage, I want it to continue. So uh, I'm making a pledge this morning, and if you don't know what that is, it's the shower. Mine is on the uh, right from now on. I will never again hang my washcloth like that. Next. My wife put it on Facebook. I can surely tell the church about my terrible sins. Huh? Oh, you didn't name me. Oh, well, yeah. Who else lives in our house? Ah. Prepare for the end. I'm a little loud. Prepare for the end. Uh-huh. What? Back it up. Matthew? I don't think I have one scripture in my notes about Matthew. Yikes. Matthew 26, 40? Let's look that up and see what it says. I don't know. It's not in my notes. I don't know how that got up there. Matthew 26, verse 40. Oh, well. Jesus came to the disciples and he looked on them. I don't have my glasses this morning, so I really can't see you. Uh, well, this one says he wanted to sleep, so. 2440? Well, that's, that matches it a little bit better. 2440 says, uh, Then two shall be in the field, and the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Hey, forget all that and go to the next slide. We're going to Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. That's what my sermon's about. I have no idea how Matthew got up here. I was sleeping when I typed it. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal... There was silence in heaven for about an hour. Oh, some of you are paying attention. There was silence in heaven for about 30 minutes. Now, Maybe you don't know, but in heaven, there is no silence. Heaven is a noisy place. I, my sister might not enjoy heaven. No, never mind. She doesn't like noise. Well, I don't either. But in heaven, there's going to be a lot of noise. You know that the seraphims are, are crying, holy, 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 24-7. 300, oh, there's, forget it, there's no day and night in heaven. But it's eternal that they're around the throne of God crying, holy, holy, holy. But now at this time, it says it's silent in heaven. Mm. There's no angelic beings crying holy, no choir singing. 
um, Christ and his, his Holy Spirit are silent. Now I wonder why for a half an hour. Anyone, any one of you know why it's for half an hour? Marissa, she said, because it's preparing for Jesus to come. Oh, she read the title, Preparing for the End, and put two and two together. Good job, lady. Um, oh, Paul, you know why it's 30, half an hour? She'll interpret for you. Go ahead. So that's why it was 30 minutes? I don't know why 30 minutes. Oh. We have an idea. Hilda said it takes 30 minutes to open the seal. Let's hear it from Dr. Cruz. Maybe because, because uh, the scriptures often say in the fullness of time, this happens. So this was not in the fullness of time that it was happening. It was only in half time. It interrupted it, in other words. It wasn't finished yet. Think everything wasn't finished yet. There was still more prophecy to be fulfilled. Thank you, Pastor, Doctor. <clears throat> oh, well, that's not my topic today. If you want to know about the 30 minutes, study it. That's your problem. What I'm trying to do is show you that all of heaven is preparing for the end. E N. D. Yeah. Now, when the end is close, um, it's no time to be lukewarm. Right now, I think we're near the end. I told you that last week. At the movie house, you go to the movie. You always first, you watch the preview of future movies. God is showing the world today the previews of what's going to happen on the earth. Hey, the Ebola, that is a preview of what God says will happen, only much worse. Wake up, church. God always warns. I know, I, I told you that last week. But so, therefore, it's no time to be lukewarm. Revelation chapter 3, 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm... And you're not cold. And you're not hot. I, God, well, I shouldn't do this in church. No, I won't. Spew you out of his mouth. There's no time right now to be lukewarm in your heart and in your spirit. It's a time to become Repentant and ready. Revelations 2 5 says, I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick from his place. It's going to be a quick thing that God does. 
Heaven is making final preparation for the end. Now, some of you say, wait a minute. It's not going to happen. They said that way back in the Bible, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. It says, when is this going to happen? He promised to come. Well, when is that going to happen? Ever since my father's died, way back then until now, everything just goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. <laughs> People tell me, oh, all these things happening in the world, uh, the gay right thing, tolerance, accepting the um, filth that the world puts in front of us. All of that just is just a process of uh, change. In the world. It has nothing to do with the coming of Jesus Christ. People think that. It's up for you and I to let them know. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this Ebola thing? When someone brings that up in a topic, let them know. Oh, hey, Ebola? That's a preview of Revelation. Is it the black horse or the pale horse? Yeah. When someone around you begins to talk about Ebola, tell them, hey, have you read the book of Revelation? It talks about a pale horse that carries those illnesses. This is a preview, a warning that Jesus is coming. It's your opportunity to testify, to witness, to let them know there is a God. Ladies and gentlemen, even though it's, it seems nothing has changed and it's just a process, God is preparing for the end. Heaven is making the uh, final preparations for the coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a couple that's getting married soon. I, I guess I can talk about you. If you don't like it, they, they won't be here next week. <laughs> Ashley's planning on getting married. Ashley, have you made any plans? Zero? Do you have a date set? Oh. She's made a few plans. She set a date. Yeah. She's made some plans. God is making plans. If you're planning... A celebration. Ed uh, celebrated his birthday a few years ago <laughs> of 80. I don't know how old he is now, but 90 something. But uh, we had a big, someone planned a party for him for his 80th birthday. They made a lot of plants, preparations. They had tables, they had chairs, they had food. It was, it was in detail. They have a cake? Oh, yeah. They had a cake. You see, you're planning something. You make plans. God has made some plans. He's not forgotten one detail. 
He knows every detail that he has planned. And he says, this is going to happen this week. Maybe someone will get an idea that I am coming back again. If you didn't read the news, was it this morning or yesterday, the new case of uh, Ebola in Texas, I think it is. Hey, God had it planned. It says, church, wake up. I'm coming. Now, putting that aside, Satan has made some final, or is making preparation also. Yeah. Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you that dwell there. But woe <clears throat> to the earth, the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. The devil is filled with fury. Because he knows his time is short. Satan is making ready for the end also. Now, what is Satan planning? Satan is not chasing a person who was a Christian in the past and then has rejected God who is backslidden. That's not Satan's objective. You know what Satan's plan. I'm going to let you preach. Come up here. Voice. The Bible says that Satan's plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. That's a good verse, David. Satan's plan is towards the elect of Christ. Those who are faithful like you. That's who Satan is chasing and wants to destroy. In recent years, there's been the explosion of the new age of the um, occult has exploded. You we had a, a person come to church one time years ago. They had a, uh, I don't remember if it was a, a son or a daughter, about 12 years old. And they said, we're having problems with our child. What can we do? I looked at the child. And I looked at the parent. And I wanted to say, really? You have no idea why the kid's behaving crazy? Yeah, I wanted to slap them. But I'm a good pastor. But I did tell the mom, I said, hey, why is your child not behaving right? Look at his shirt. On his t-shirt were demons all over front and back. I said, does he have any more like that? Yeah, all of them at home. And you don't know why their behavior is bad? I told them, parent, collect all the t-shirts and burn them. They didn't come back. Parents, if you allow your kids to watch Harry Potter, yeah, I know. Oh, you're, you're just, anyway. Parents, if you allow your kids to um, play, uh, what's that name of that game? 
the clan? No. No, 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 no. No, not that one. Um, not that one. <laughs> Ouija board and all those things expect trouble. I don't know how I got on that. But we are nearing the end. No, 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 no. Don't do those things. Huh? I, I've never seen one. <laughs> Holy. I don't want to sign that word. Yeah, that, that's holy water. You got it. What comes out of my mouth is holy. Yeah. I had an interpreting business for many years. All the people said, you have to interpret all the filth. I said, no, I do not. I never did for over 10 years. It's the choice of the individual. It's the choice of the individual. Oh, it's not easy. I lost jobs because of that. I lost business because of that. But I kept myself holy. That is the person that Satan is chasing. You know, we have had presidents, uh, probably the last five, who knows, I don't know, I know Bush, I know Reagan, uh, all of those guys and ladies, their wives, use the, um, what do you call them, those people that read the stars, astrologists? They went to those individuals and said, come on, tell me about my life. Hey, the killings in the schools in the last few years. Those things did not just happen. They were prepared. Satan himself has prepared to do the havoc. It's not just a course of the world and nature. No way. All of it's part of Satan's preparation. The, the big issue today is the tolerance issue of gay marriage. We have to accept them. God is not going to accept them, ladies and gentlemen. God will not accept them. God does not accept what he calls abominable. Let me tell you something else. There are no lazy demons. There are no lazy demons. I wish I could say that about you and I. got everybody's attention. Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Satan wants to eat you for lunch. So be careful when you leave this building and someone you're driving and they pull in front of you. Don't let Satan eat you for lunch. We need to be prepared. This is what the Word of God says in 1 John 2.15. It says, love not the world or the things in the world. Wow, you came back, Justin. I'm glad. I thought you'd got mad and left. No. I'm a bad pastor. It says, do not love the world. 
If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Hey. God's people are digging into the world instead of letting go of the world. Luke 12, 15. Then he said, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of our possessions. Your life does not consist of how much or how big your walls are in your clash of the clan group. If you don't know what that is, that, that's all right. Things can tie us down to the world. While heaven is preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ, while Satan is preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ, what do we do? Uh, how many hours did you use the Internet this week? I want to get an app to put on my iPad of how many hours I remain on the Internet. Now, I'll not ask my wife to confess her sin. I mean, uh, confess today. I'll confess for you. I probably took too much time on my uh, games this week. But let me inform you, I know for a fact, I didn't take equal hours on the internet or games that I took in my Bible study and my prayer time. Some weeks or some days I might not be able to confess that. Today and yesterday I'm able to confess that. This week, because I was monitoring, because I knew I needed to prepare for what the Lord is doing. I need to monitor it. Why? Because I want to make sure He gets more than, oh, uh, okay, uh, Subway Surfer. Now, I didn't play that game for almost four weeks. I gave it up. My hand couldn't function. And left-handed, it just didn't work. So I got more time with God. Oh, maybe the Lord caused my... Oh. Oh, I see God. You're talking to me. Ooh. If you come back next week with your hand all swollen up, I know God's talking to you. Oh, Lord. We need to monitor what we're doing because we live in the last days. And people in the days of Noah, they didn't pay heed to the warnings. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah did not pay heed to the warnings. We're living the good life. How many of you are starving to death? To death. One family here is starving to death. Uh, David, <laughs> Amelia, your children are hungry. Do 
Case rested. Uh, uh, yeah, William, stand up. <laughs> William, he can stand up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we live the good life. Ladies and gentlemen, God is giving us warning after warning after warning that things are coming, that things are changing. Uh, someday we have to stand before God and give account for what we have done. Jesus, Jesus wants to meet you. Yeah, Jesus wants to meet you today. If I were to meet Jesus today, what, what do I want him to see? Um, what he will see is the real me. Please stand up. Oh, here I am. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. We have to prepare to meet him. I told you last week and before, said three things. Don't be afraid of what's happening in the world. We have God to depend on. Second, get your life in order. Get your life in order. And thirdly, keep looking up. Keep looking up. I go to prepare a place for you. All through the Bible, God is challenging men and women, boys and girls, for a relationship with Him. To become Him, separated from the world. It's time for you to make the decision. To live for Him today and from now on. Some of you don't have long to live. Whoa. Yeah. I'm not talking about age. It doesn't matter the age. Some of us do not have long to live. I hope all of us are caught up with Jesus tomorrow. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Worship team. Which way are you going? Are you going closer to Him? Or further away from him. It's your choice. Hit it, Blake.